NCT 127, one of the, the subunits of the NCT boy gr- boy band, boy group. Um, from uh, is, Are they SM Entertainment? Actually, yes, can, yes. Yeah, sure, surely <laughs> YG yeah, wouldn't I, release against Blackpink, but SM right. was like, fuck it. Let's send one <laughs> of our most popular acts in the U.S. head to head with Blackpink. Bold move. And so uh, their, their fourth album, Two Baddies, comes out. Uh, like you said, opposite Blackpink. Do you feel like, like this album had the juice to go toe-to-toe with Blackpink? Yeah, I, I think ultimately uh, it's they're very different appeals and kind of speaks to when other genres release stuff head-to-head. There's room for both, and I think that's that's surely the case for fans of both of these groups that like both. But yeah, I, I think NCT 127 uh, kind of exists in a very separate lane from Blackpink for all intents and purposes. And I was definitely interested interested in hearing this album because I because we hadn't talked about NCT 127 specifically to this point. Uh, we've actually kind of been slacking on covering NCT because they just release so much music across their various uh, subunits. We talked about the Wavy album and we talked about NCT Dream's first album. But that means in, in that time we missed a main NCT album. We missed a second NCT Dream album, and we missed NCT 127's last album 11 months ago. Alas, finally uh, jumping in on this, and I think it more or less lives up to the reputation that they hold, which is why I think they kind of exist in their own little pocket of K-pop. And they're very popular, obviously, which is that they like to experiment a lot mm. with their sounds and their genres. And you definitely hear that on Four Baddies. There's all kinds of tracks on this. Yeah, you know, as you're listening through, at times it sounds like super futuristic and like hyper poppy. At other times it sounds more traditional, like R and B, and even other times like just more toned down, like sing songy pop. And uh, I, I think that that genre uh, spanning type of album actually worked really well to like hold my attention throughout. Um, I think as we've talked about with some of the other uh, k-pop groups there can be a sameness especially if the production on the songs tends to kind of fall in in a similar realm but this really had you guessing from song to song i think that worked out really well i do i do have to say for my own taste uh the more like traditional like r&b pop sounding songs or just more traditional pop sounding songs didn't grab me as much but there's a few tracks especially near the beginning that are like pretty futuristic and like really inventive with the production and, and like the, the different like flair and, and like ways that they bring vocals in and out that I just thought were like really inventive and really interesting to listen to when it, when it got more traditional, it was almost like disappointing. I was like, Let, let's go back to that. I want to hear more of that. <laughs> so uh, pretty interesting album to listen to. What did you think of uh, two baddies? <laughs> I mean, who among us? doesn't want both two baddies and one Porsche, (laughs) right? (laughs) Very relatable. Now, I think for the title track, that one's all right, because I think ultimately, like, that chorus is pretty corny. (laughs) Yeah. But the rapping, I think, is actually pretty solid. And I think um, the faces of NCT 127, uh, Taeyong and Mark, who I know most, most, mostly because of their inclusion in Super M, the SM supergroup, I feel like they really carry that track and i like ncd 127's hip-hop because you know nine member group they they usually have a lot of the dudes rapping when they have some rap you know and i think that's pretty fun just to kind of hear all the different vocals on there but um i think two baddies is it, it, it can be like a little grating with that with that chorus yeah and it's too bad too because i really i really like the like horns with like the really deep like vibrating bass around it. I think that's actually a really great lead in um, to the chorus. But yeah, the chorus is kind of like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, but it, I think overall the track is like, okay. Um, I actually liked Faster, the first track. Mm-hmm. First of all, anytime you're going to start off a track with a falcon screech at the beginning, I'm like already in. But then like the the like toned down like production with just like heavy, heavy um percussion and bass to it just really sucked right. me in i think they mm-hmm. blow over it like 
really well. And they really trade back and forth beautifully. There's a lot of chemistry between them, I think, is pretty obvious. Yeah, totally. I think the way that base really builds, that baseline is really strong. And yeah, it's a good fit for them. It's more in line, I think, with their like traditional like NCT brand, that kind of song. Um, but, you know, I, I was a bit struck by just a bunch of these songs have really catchy choruses or hooks. You know, I think just the, the vocal performance on some of these songs I really do enjoy. I thought uh, you speaking to the beginning still time lapse, um, mm-hmm. the harmony on that chorus, the can we fix it or fix it part, I think is very catchy. Love that one. Um, but then later on, songs like Black Clouds, another catchy chorus. Um playback in particular another catchy chorus so you know even if like some of the songs i might like just gravitate towards some of those moments i think it all sounds really good when you have like these harmonized vocal performances kind of layered on top of each other on these sticky catchy choruses yeah i I think they definitely thrive off the harmonies and just like the like you said the way that they can kind of suck you in and just kind of go back to these courses that just get yeah earwormy uh i i think for me though like as i was going throughout the album a song like tasty really stands out because <laughs> it's just so unique in terms of like the tempo that they're going for and when they really bring that energy and also they start to do some of these like vocal distortions to the the track it really just like it really surprised me but i was like yeah I, like I like that they're going for it here, and I thought it was pretty good. I hear you laughing. What? what I what, thought Tasty had some of one, probably the funniest like vocal delivery. It's uh Johnny first, then someone else later. It's a uh, we're savage outlaws, rock solid, <laughs> no flaws, and it's like done intentionally monotone. I thought that was so funny. Yeah, there's also another point where they're like so tasty, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. It's it is pretty great. Um. Yeah, I think overall though, like N- NCT one two seven from from my first listen, I was really impressed. Uh, and I I think that, like you said, they put out so much music, but you can see why people want to get so much music from them because they're mm-hmm. going all over the map, and it, it's all pretty interesting. So, any final thoughts? Are you ready to move on to some rock music, Dave? <laughs> no, I, I'm curious to see how this one does. It's the fourth NCT one two seven album, and NCT one two seven is easily the most popular version of nct in the u.s and i'd like to see just how far they can go with that as we've talked about k-pop's growing uh acceptance and and dominance in the u.s so more to come for sure more to come for sure uh follow our nostalgia best of 2022 playlist to hear all the songs we've enjoyed this year